Hello everyone. So the process that we are going to start now is to create a SSL credential with a new private key for our secure mail server. This process is mainly because uh, some uh, most of the customers, most of the clients will be uh, importing SSL certificates every year for the tenants that they are using. The process is easy to get the certificate signing request get it imported, uh, get it signed by a certified certificate authority and come back and import them on this screen. This process that I'm going to do now is a little bit different because this involves creating a new private key. So I'm going to show the process. Uh, in this process, usually you will have to use a third party applications uh, to create the new key. Now that portion I have not covered in this video because that involves third party. So this is the process after you have created the SSL credentials with the new private key. I will show how to import them to the management console. So this is my lab server. Uh, for example, voltage1.com is the tenant name, domain name with which I'm gonna uh, show this example. I came to the tenants tab on the management console I'm going to click on edit. After this, I will go to the host name and SSL certificates. Now you can see on the screen that the tenant host name that I have uh, is voltage pp 000voltageonecom which is my working tenant. To fulfill this process, we need to delete this tenant host name and recreate it with the new private key credentials. So for that, what we have to do as a first step is to create a new tenant host name like a dummy. Why we are doing this is because if we need to have one dummy tenant host name right there before this screen to be able to delete the other one. That is the only reason uh, we are creating this dummy tenant host name. So I'm just going to let it whatever it is here. If there is no name that appears on your screen, you can put something like dummy.voltage.com or whatever. Click on finish. Now on this screen, you can see that now I have a dummy tenant host name and my working valid tenant host name. The next step is I will have to you uh, change this use custom tenant host name. Why? Because on the first example, uh, on the first selection, you can see that voltage dash pp dash 000 voltage one dot com is present. But now my next step is to delete it. So I will have to delete this host name here and change it to the second one, which I just created as a dummy. That way it will allow me to delete the voltage one. So now the next step is to delete this tenant, which I'm going to recreate. So I'm just clicking on cancel because uh, I just wanted to copy my tenant host name so that I don't misspell it while creating. So I just copied it. Now I'm going to delete this. Now my next step is to create a new tenant host name, the one with where I have the SSL credential with a new private key. This is an important step because I need to have my exact same tenant host name that I used to create the new private key. And since I have already imported that key, the new key uh, from a third party app, so I have that saved on my computer. I clicked and I'm going to put the password that I used. Oh, let me see why it shows like that. Oh, okay. Probably because um, there was an extra space. So I'm going to try it again. Yeah, there was an extra space. So that did not allow me. You have to make sure that it is the exact the tenant host name is exactly how you took it uh, took the csr and got it signed with the new private key now as you can see i have uh, two tenants here and now i want to delete my dummy so that i can just keep my working tenant with the new private key so i'm going to change this back 
to voltage1.com so that it will allow me to delete my dummy tenant. Great. So now you can see uh, on my screen there is no dummy tenant. I was able to delete it and this is the new tenant hostname that I just recreated with the new SSL credential with the new private key. Uh, just before uh, you can save it, you can click on the tenant hostname to make sure about the validity. That way you know that your, your certificate has been imported correctly. So now I see that it's going to expire next year on 18 July which is correct my domain name which is correct and all these things you can match from the details that you had now I can peacefully save this because I know that the tenant host name that I entered is correct the certificate that I imported looks correct so I'm gonna exit from here and my next step is to update the cluster to make sure that everything is fine it will uh, anytime you make any changes on the management console as we know we have to update the cluster so that it shows in effect and if there is a problem related to the changes that we made we would usually sh see some error message uh, right here after the update is done great so I I was able to successfully update my local cluster the next step that you can do is to test uh, by sending an encrypted email and to see if you are able to open that and also just as a reminder any changes that you make um, on the management console or the server you have to you should be taking all the backups in hand since as you saw we have we deleted the tenant hostname so we don't uh, when there are a lot of customers involved and the tenants this is just a lab but in real life you have a lot of customers who are encrypting decrypting every minute so you just want to make sure that you don't miss any data while doing this uh, procedure we don't want to mess up with the production environment so it's always suggested that we should take the backup before doing this and that's how we uh, accomplished creating an SSL credential with a new private key for our secure mail server.